This episode was made possible thanks to our amazing partner, The Explorer Bible. It's a brand new kids Bible that just came out. The thing I love about it is that it does the same thing we're trying to do here on the Mini BFF podcast, helping God's Word come alive for the kids in our lives. The Explorer Bible for Kids is written in a clear language of the Christian Standard Bible translation and has these super fun, full-color designs. Kids of all ages can explore and understand the Bible for themselves with all the fun facts and timelines and photography and more. It's awesome. So buy your copy today from LifeWay.com and get 50% off using the code BFF. Hi, friends. Welcome to the Mini BFF Podcast. I'm your host and friend, Annie Updowns. I'm so excited to be with you all for a couple of minutes today and share a little story from one of my favorite books, The Bible. No matter where you are or what you've been up to, I love getting to spend this time with you today. And also, I love seeing you at Mini BFF Book Club every other Monday night. It is on Instagram Live. It's 6 p.m. Central. And if you miss it live, you can always go back and watch the videos of us reading some of our favorite picture books to you guys. Today, I want to give an extra shout out to my friends, Josie and Lena. Hi, Josie and Lena. We love that you love the podcast. We're so thankful to have you as Mini BFFs. All right, friends, let me tell you how this podcast is going to go. First, I'm going to tell you a story, and then we'll pray together. And then I'm going to ask you to draw something fun for me. We love seeing your pictures that you draw for us. So let's see them today. Okay, y'all ready to get started with our story? Me too. This one is called Lost and Found. Here we go. All right, mini BFFs, picture this. You've just come home after a busy day of activities. Maybe you went to school or the zoo. (gasps) I love the zoo. Or church or practice for some sport you are playing. You are exhausted from all the fun you've had. You run into your house and open up your bag to get your water bottle out because you are so thirsty that you have to have some water right away or else you might just fall apart. But when you open your backpack, your water bottle is nowhere to be found. Oh, man, did you leave your water bottle at school? Or did you leave it at practice? Maybe you left it on the table at church. Wherever it is, it is missing, gone. And you're a little bit crushed. I mean, no one likes to lose things. It's a total bummer when you have something you really like and suddenly it's gone. Can I tell you some of the mini BFFs? I lose stuff too. At least I forget where I've placed something and then I have to search all over my house or in my car until I find it. I've gotten a lot better about keeping track of things as I've gotten older, but it has taken a lot of practice. I also have gotten a lot better at retracing my steps and being able to find what I lost. Sometimes I find it, but there are times when I don't, and that water bottle or whatever the thing is that I lost is long gone. Of course, that makes me sad and sometimes even frustrated, but usually whatever it is that I lost, I can go out and get that item again. Like, I can always save up a couple of dollars and buy a new water bottle. Can I tell you something else, Mini BFFs? When I was in school, I always loved getting to go the lost and found to see if I could find whatever it was that I had lost. I mean, that box is full of missing treasures. Now, I know I've said this before, and some of you are going to be like, Annie, we know, but just in case you didn't, I need to tell you again. Remember how we talked about the Gospels, the books of the Bible, where we can read about when Jesus walked on the earth? Can you say the names of the books with me? And if you can't, it's totally okay, but let's try together. When I say go, tell me the gospel books of the Bible. Are you ready? Set, go. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Very good, many BFFs. So in those books, Jesus told us a lot of stories. And there are several stories about people losing things, like a shepherd who lost a sheep, which we talk about in episode 14, if you want to go back and listen to that, or a woman who lost a gold coin. But one story I always think about is the story of the lost son. So Jesus tells this story about a man who had two sons who he loved very much. This man had a lot of land and a lot of money and planned to one day give it all to both of his sons. But he didn't think he would do that for a very long time. He wanted to enjoy all his wealth and all the things with his sons, not just give it all away. But one day, the younger of the two sons got sick and tired of waiting to have all the things that would one day be his. So he asked his father to give him his half of all his wealth that his father had for him. And surprisingly, his father agreed. The younger brother took all that was his and packed up his stuff and went on a trip to another country. And while he was on that trip, he spent all his money that he'd been given. He wasn't too smart with his money. He ended up losing everything, not because he misplaced it, but because he was being foolish. 
You would think that after he ended up having nothing, he would just go back home, but he didn't do that. He felt a lot of shame for losing everything his father had given him. So instead of going back home, he went to work for someone in the town that he was staying in. And you know what his new job was? Feeding pigs, you guys. Yes, he went from living a very fancy life to feeding pigs. In fact, one day he was so hungry that he got jealous of what the pigs were eating and wanted to eat their food too. Ew, can you believe it? It was then that he came to his senses and realized that the people who worked for his father lived a much better life than he was currently living. But he knew that if he was to go back to his father, he would have to admit that he did something wrong and say he was sorry. And that felt really scary. He decided to tell his father that he was sorry and that he was wrong and that he was no longer worthy of being his son because of how selfish he'd been. Admitting we are wrong is a big thing, many BFFs, but the younger son knew that was what he had to do. And as he was walking back to his house, his father saw him coming up the street. Now, you probably think that his father walked right up to him and gave him a big old lecture, but that isn't what happened at all. Instead, his father ran to him and hugged him. He called for his workers to prepare a feast and throw a huge party because his son, who he thought was gone, was back. The Bible tells us that the father said he was lost and now is found. And they all began to celebrate. Think about how happy you are when you find something you've lost. It's a pretty good feeling. I mean, I sometimes want to yell out, Yoo-hoo! Yes, I found it! Whenever I get a hold of whatever I was looking for. Well, that's how the dad felt in this story about his younger son. Do you know why Jesus wants us to know this part of the story? It's because that is how he feels whenever one of us comes to him. God doesn't want any of his children to be lost from him. He doesn't want us to forget that he lives in our heart and is always there to guide us and help us. So know that every time we turn to him, he is having a celebration. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you that with you, we are never lost. We are always found because our hearts can rest in the protection of your hands. Help us to always follow you. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Oh, it is a very good feeling to find what you have lost. It's an even better feeling to know with Jesus we are never lost. He is always searching for us. So for our drawing today, will you draw me a picture of your water bottle? I mean, I want to see that water bottle of your dreams. Did you know my water bottle has confetti on it? I know, it's so fun. I can't wait to see what your water bottle or the water bottle you hope to have one day looks like. So draw a picture and then grab a grown up to post and tag on Mini BFF Book Club on Instagram or you can mail it to us at P.O. Box 121826, Nashville, Tennessee, 37212. And Mini BFFs, make sure you come back next week for the start of a very, very special series that focuses on the season of Advent. Mini BFFs, thanks so much for spending time with me today. I'm always so happy to have you here with us. Remember, be kind to your grown-ups, your teachers, and your friends, and I'll see you next time. And hey, grown-ups, if you want to talk more about today's story, we read from Luke chapter 15, verses 11 through 31. Bye, Mini BFFs. Love you, mean it.